Today is Wednesday, October 14, 2020, and welcome to another edition of Wildcat Weekly. Hi, everybody. I'm your host, Joe Krause. Folks, we are on episode number five of this semester. If this is the first time you're checking out our show, thanks for clicking on the play button. And if you've been with us since we started up the show again last month, we thank you for tuning in once again tonight and for checking out all of our stuff this semester. On this show, we'll be joined by either a Damon College coach or student athlete to discuss how they're preparing for the upcoming season, their past success with the Wildcats, and what it's meant to them to be part of the Damon College community. As always, we are on social media. Follow us on Twitter at Damon Athletics. Like our Facebook page, Damon College Athletics. And visit our website, DamonWildcats.com. If you haven't checked out our website, folks, we have a lot of great content Coming your way this semester, we start up a student athlete spotlight series, our Wildcat social series. My cohort, Mike Maranto, has been interviewing alumni left and right to discuss what being a Wildcat has meant to them. And I just wrote a quick story about Derek Bartlow and Trey Biscaglia from the Demon Men's Soccer Team. Remember those names as they joined the FC Buffalo organization this past summer. And they shared what they learned from FC Buffalo and hopefully we'll transfer over when Damon Men's Soccer resumes play. Our guest tonight is a redshirt senior on the Damon Men's basketball team and was a Division II All-American last season. He set Damon's single-game records, 47 points on 19 made shots in the ECC quarterfinal win versus Queens College at Lumsden back in March. And he also led the Wildcats to their second NCAA tournament appearance before the tournament was canceled due to the COVID pandemic. But he leads the Wildcats in scoring and rebounding the past three seasons, along with a 47 career double-doubles to his name and a long list of individual accolades that if we try to go through the entire list, we'd be here until we resumed a taping for next week's episode. Here again on the show tonight is Damon Redshirt Senior Center, Mr. Andrew Sisko. And we're here on Wildcat Weekly with Damon Men's Basketball star, Andrew Sisko. Uh, Andrew, thanks for joining us today. Um, and how would you, how have things been for you so far this semester? Um, I think I think things have been going pretty well. I mean, as well as anybody can ask. Um, times are weird right now. You know, we never know when we're going to play. We're just kind of being in that mode of when we get the time and, and when we're told we can play, we're going to be ready to play then. So it's just kind of a weird time to be able to try to stay ready as much as you can while also just doing your schoolwork and uh, getting everybody healthy and all that. Definitely. And every day I've been uh, here at, at Damon, I've seen the team working out at Lumsden. Um, a normal year, Andrew, as you know, would have been the start of the regular season workout, the first day of practice coming up. Um, and I guess – you know, it's slowly building up now, but when you first stepped on the court, I'm going to guess last month when you guys all came back, how would you describe those first those first feelings of being back in Lumsden for, I'm going to guess, the first time since the last playoff game against Queens back in March? Yeah, well, you know, Coach Max brought this point up a few times. Um, I know it's it's Corona time and stuff like that right now, but really there's nothing up until this the 15th we really would be doing the same exact things we're doing now other than um a, a, just missing a few workouts here or there not being able to go to the track which that's just one part of the, the season we we don't want to miss but we'll we're ranking up for that on the floor um but we're really not missing much until we get to that that october 15th date so it's just been fun to get back on the floor um yeah, really until that, that, that fun performance we all had at, against Queens last year. Um, and we kind of had our season sh uh, ended short. So it's just nice to be able to get back in that gym. Usually I'm here all summer playing uh, summer leagues in the gym and stuff like that. But this is really nice to be able to get back in the, the gym for the first time indoors. So was this summer you mentioned it was kind of – well, last summer uh, we were able to practice, you know, work out in the summer league. But was this summer kind of maybe a, a good um, step back? For all you guys to kind of like relax a bit? I mean, I think it was kind of – it was a weird time. It was one of those where you want to stay busy, you want to stay in shape, stuff like that. But also, to me, it never really felt like we had a summer. I mean, right. we went from – we were here, kids went home for spring break. We had to stick around because we made the tournament and we were going on our way on our way to Binghamton – or to Bridgeport, stopped in Binghamton, had our season ended there. 
but that kind of just we came back and we never really knew if we were coming back things like that and just kind of school just ended so it wasn't like you had that real full stop to the season in the, in the school year where you have that break of like all right let's take a deep breath finals are over now in class let's let's get back and let's go to uh summer break stuff like that it was just more of the unknown and that's the that's the weirdest part time's flown by um these past six months have been crazy i i feel like yesterday i was on the bus to binghamton um but, you know, we're just trying to stay healthy, like I said, uh, get everybody prepared for the season as much as we can and, and try to incorporate the new guys into the things we do around here at Damon. Yeah, you're telling me, brother. I mean, I can't believe it's already October. I feel like, like you said, it's just March and everything. Yeah, usually preseason is dragging along. All those 6 a.m. Uh, track runs are tough. But it, I didn't even realize up until about last week, I realized that it's October 15th already. Let's get ready to play basketball. Definitely, definitely. And the last season for those just – Joining us, we didn't really know, um, you know, 24 wins again, back-to-back 24-win season. Um, you made it to the NCAA tournament, clutch another spot. Uh, the huge game at Key Bank Center, which was my favorite moment of the year, playing downtown. Um, I guess, how would you describe last year being with being with that team and, and, and doing making all those accomplishments um, successful? Um, I mean, definitely uh, last season was something to always remember. Um, like I said, October 15th comes around. Usually in two weeks we're playing UB in Syracuse. And uh, being a longtime Syracuse fan, that was a great experience to start off the year. And then we had the chance to go to Missouri. Um, had fun out there. Had a great time. I got was uh, came out with a good win. Uh, played well against the, uh, the number one team in the country. Um, they're like 70-1 and one in the last few years. So it was fun to be able to get on the floor with them. But it was just to be able to uh, be on that floor with the, the guys the one last time. Um, all to see the guys that we brought in, Joey Wallace helped us out a lot, um, filled a role that we, we needed help and then filled quickly. Um, so it would just be able to get out there with the guys and have a great time and, and just see all the success that we had. Um, I don't think we – I think we could wish we would have uh, won a few more games at the end of the season, but that, that's every team. Every team wants to win more games. Um, as long as we went out there and we, we, we tried as best we could, uh, that's all we can ask for. And to build on that, it would be fun. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off there. Oh, um, but Coach McDonald, I talked with him back in March, and he described, with all that veteran leadership on the team, he described you guys as a, and I'm quoting here, um, the chemistry at times was like an old married couple. Uh, you know, you'd fight at times, you'd, uh, and then patch it up and get it done. Um, is that the best way you would describe just being with Jeff and Breon and, and Jay and the rest of those rest of those senior guys? Um, I mean – I think Coach Mack definitely hit it on the, the nail on the head right there with that quote. But one of the things that I, I think you don't see as a coach is sometimes we're in the dorms together. We're, we're living together. We're, we're hanging out off the campus. Coach Mack always knows a lot, but some things are just – there's a brotherhood there. And, yes, we, we argue and stuff like that, but that's because we had a lot of minutes combined between the four of us that played and, and adding Joey Wallace to the, the, to the, the, the – the, uh, the process and things like that. There's a lot of college basketball minutes there. And I know Coach Mack has even more than all of us, but sometimes it just – you butt heads. Everybody thinks they know things, but there's nothing wrong with that. I think that made practices a lot better. Um, it honestly helped us this year in the long run. It got a lot of guys better this year. It got a lot of guys prepared because there's not a lot of teams in our region who have had um, – kids who had reserve roles last year play against 5,000-point scores in practice every single day. So I think that's helped us a lot this year. Uh, kind of tested a lot of players last year. Got a lot of guys very very comfortable with the game. And, and yeah, it was a lot of freshman seasons last year or transfer uh, seasons for some people. But that got them accumulated to how we do things out here at Damon and, and got them into a system where we compete every day and – Guys are going to bring it every day, and, and we know because we've brought a lot of a, a minutes here and won a lot of games for Coach Mack and, and Damon College here that we have a lot of experience, and we just want to build off that. Um, I think it was just fun. It wouldn't be an old – I wouldn't say an old married couple. I just think it, it's a lot of people who wanted to win, um, and sometimes that just got the best of us. Definitely. You've mentioned Coach McDowell a lot uh, in the past couple of minutes and in the past. How influential – has he been for you and the others on and off the court the past few years? Um, I don't think you can actually put a, a, a scope on how influential he is on any single person. Um, like, like I've since I've been out here all uh, five years, I stay out here in the summer. I play a lot of basketball with a lot of different people around this, this community. And 
one common factor that's always brought up is, is Coach McDonald. Everybody knows Coach McDonald, that whether it be other Division One coaches, other other players, other guys who have just grown up in the community and, and went to school out here or went somewhere else and came back. Everybody knows Coach Mack. Um, the influence he's had on me is, is something that you can't even describe. And some of the stuff was uh, brought up in the article written last year, a uh, very good piece that was written about us. Um, but I don't think you can actually put a, a – a, scope on how influential he has on people um i was looking back through our roster stuff this year just trying to get to know my guys and see who we got this year um and one of the things that was asked in from coach moranto online was what brought you to damon and if you if you look at that there's probably i think we have five in uh six new kids here five five freshmen maybe i think it's five freshmen and one new player um or it's four and one um, but one of the things that was always brought up, and I read this um, nine times out of ten, was that they came here for some reason because of Coach Mack. I don't think – I think there's very limited people in this, in this community of, of basketball around, the, around this, the country, around the world, that have an impact on kids' lives as much as Coach Mack. And now being in this fifth year, I think um, – it's really, really came evident to me, and, and that's one of the reasons that I was stuck here. I couldn't leave because just the, the impact he's had on everybody's lives um, was something I wanted to finish out here. Yeah, definitely. So, I mean, were there, were there other offers or any, were, was there any interest from other schools to, to maybe move on after last season? Or was it or was I mean, there always interest? There's always interest. I mean – I've been very blessed to have a very good basketball team and a lot of guys around me who have helped me succeed and, and I've been able to help our team succeed. But the one thing is, is nothing's ever guaranteed. Um, Coach Mack always says, prove it. That's his, that's his thing. And I feel that I, we haven't really proven the one thing that I want to. Yes, we all know I've won a lot of the awards and stuff like that. I've, I've been very blessed, like I said, with teammates. But the one thing I've always wanted to just finish off is – is just getting that championship for this school and, and being able to see my teammates succeed in, in the fullest that they can succeed. Um, I'd rather have one championship team uh, win rather than any award that I've ever won. And, and that's what we're truly trying to build here this year. Um, I saw how the girls won their tournament there last year, and I was so happy for them. Um, they had a lot of people that, that every single day they brought it in practice. And I think I just want to be a part of that now. That's something that I want to finish off before we leave, before I, my time here is done. Right. We're here with Andrew Cisco on Wildcat Weekly today, um, a longtime David basketball player. I mean, since I've been here, I've you know seen you grow, and it's been really cool to see. Um, That's one word for it: growth. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And I read from Jerry Sullivan. Um, he did a story about you for Channel Four, uh, yeah. longtime writer, and he mentioned about um, your entire lifestyle kind of changed heading into your redshirt uh, freshman year and how you, you know, decided to lose some weight and, and work out more. And, and, and what I read completely changed your diet. Your diet. Um, I guess besides for basketball reasons, how was that um, that change, going through that change, how has it helped you in, in the rest of your life? Um, I, think, I think it's just made me a lot better of a person. I think outside of basketball, when you, when you want to do something like that, you have to really – uh, commit to yourself and commit to the things around you. And I think that just helped me become more of a better leader, um, seeing that people go through everything. Um, yeah, those parts of my lives are something that I have to go with, live with every single day, but I cherish those every single day. I know that everybody has struggles. Um, you see a lot of mental stuff, health stuff now. You see Kevin Love, guys like that in the NBA coming out more. Um, it's just a lot of – everybody goes through everything, and, and you never know what somebody has behind them. So – just being able to know that and, and realize that being a, a happier person, a, a better leader, a, a better person around, around the, in a full well-rounded area. Um, that's just helped me. And it's, it's been very beneficial to me as a person. And that's why uh, we go back to coach Mack. He's one of the ones that uh, it's always in my ear. Me and him can have arguments on the court, off the court till the day, till the day is over. But the one thing is uh, no matter how mad I am, it's always good night coach. See you later bump fists and, and see you the next day and throw the ball at the next, the next game. Definitely. And you mentioned about there are, there are other people struggling right now, you know, mental health wise, physically. Um, I guess for those, cause there are, you know, I've known some people, um, you know, myself included, just trying to find that rhythm for exercising and, and changing that diet during this pandemic. Um, 
I guess for those that want to change like you did, Andrew, what suggestions would you have? Maybe like a beginner's guide, if you would. I think I think the one thing that was always for me is is everybody can talk about what they want to do. Everybody can talk about, oh yes, I want to have these goals. We always see that with the with the new year coming around. But the one thing I always that has stuck with me is you have to do it for yourself. Um, yes, you can always be as committed and you can do everything you want. But you gotta, it's got to start, start back home, right, in the right, right back with you. Um, once you, you figure out that you're actually committed, then you can do anything. And that's, that's really what it, I've had a lot of people influence me and, and a lot of people have been in my ear um, throughout my life. And it's just once you realize that you got to do it for yourself and nobody else, then, then the sky's the limit. And if you're talking about losing weight, uh, getting more fit, stuff like that, once, if it's losing weight, once those first few pounds go off, everything is, everything is game. You can do whatever you want. Once you see that change in scale, um, it's, it's, it's the most rewarding thing ever, and it just goes off easy, and you don't want to stop. Um, that's one thing that happened to me. I, I, I lost a little bit more than I wanted to, um, but it wasn't a problem because I just built off that when I came to college. I knew you were going to get into college weight programs, things like that. So you just got to stay committed and, and do it for yourself rather than anybody else. Andrew, we talked about this earlier. Or um, I guess just to go back, back to that last question really quick. What about um, I guess like like running and lifting weights? Was there anything maybe that that kind of like started it off for you? Not not so much. I was always a very active kid. I think yes, I was I was at a certain weight that I wasn't ple- pleased with, but I was always an active kid. I always outdoors all the time, stuff like that. But just changing a diet for me personally, everybody's different. There's always, always going to be a difference. Um, there's people, you can look at my old teammates, Jeff Dua, um, who has really picked up this whole weightlifting thing and this whole, this whole fitness mentality. And I'm very happy for him. Um, but for me personally, it was a different situation. It was more of what I was eating, how I was eating, when I was eating, things like that. So once you figure that out, uh, the sky's the limit. Uh, you just got to start, like I said, just do it for yourself and, and once you figure things out and what works for you, everything falls into place, I guess you could say, which is, which is the best thing. Definitely. Uh, we talked about this earlier, Andrew, about that you are the lone starter from last year's team coming back. Um, some new faces like we talked about, too. Um, and a lot of guys that are coming back that contributed off the bench. Um, Ryan Bradley. Um, we can go down the line. There's so many guys that – you know, Kyle, Kyle Harris, and, and Keith Slack as well. Um, I guess, how would you, knowing that all the guys were there, and, and you said, if, even if they were red shirt guys, they were still in practice, learning the playbook and everything. Um, throughout, I know that it's kind of weird because it's not like a, a full on team practice, like we mentioned too, but how would you, how would you describe, you know, the chemistry so far? And has it hit you yet that you're the quote unquote old man? in the locker room well you can say that but i'm young there is there's i'm the fourth oldest on the fourth youngest fourth oldest on the team i think you could say we got ziv basden who's older than me i think we have kyle harris who's older than me and i think chris luker all older than me so i may be maybe the veteran if we're talking about college basketball minutes but there's a lot of knowledge ahead of me a lot of people in the in our locker room that are older than me so let's not get too far ahead yet but the thing is when you talk about the lone starter, um, I think that's kind of overrated. Um, Like I went back to before, there's been a lot of people who have played last year who have scored 1,000 points. That's always the marker, 1,000-point score, 1,000-point player this way. They played a lot of minutes last year, but we competed against a lot of quality kids. And I can go back all the way to my freshman year, and if you ask my redshirt freshman team, me, Breon, Gennard, Madhu, and Jean-Baptiste and DeMarco, we played against, if you think about it, we played against Supreme Hanna, who is a professional, uh, I think he's in Switzerland right now. We played against Arif, who played pro. We played against Alex Milinovic, who's a pro. Um, who else did we play against? We played against everybody. And J.J. Wilkes, things like that. We would beat them. You can go back to Coach Mack. I think in that article that uh, Jerry wrote, it was, a, it was a line to quote Coach Mack, I think. He would walk into his office after practice, and he would have our head, he would put his head on the table, and he says, we're 15 and five. We can't beat our red shirts. How are we going to beat any college basketball team? And that, I think that just goes to show you how influential Coach Mack is on recruiting and in getting guys prepared with the with a red shirt year, things like that. Because they maybe they didn't play as much as they preferred last year, but they played every single day in practice, which is more beneficial for than anything 
to play against dudes who have competed at the level. Um, they still got in. Uh, all those guys you mentioned played against Syracuse, did very well against Syracuse, played against the Northwest Missouri teams, the, the West Liberties, the, the Buffalo, UB men's basketball team. Those are quality teams, and, and they all got into those games, and they've had those experiences. All right, well, we, we got here, we were playing, they know how it is, and they're just going to get better every single day. And the thing is that, yes, they haven't been in a game so much, but the, the competition that they have, they've been through is, is something that's going to be, coming from me, it's going to be something that's going to help them in the long run and, and prepare them for this year, which is another thing that I, I went back on. Um, they got those jitters out of the way, and now it's just let's everybody compete. And I think, yes, we've had a lot of veteran leadership la the last few years, but I think the talent this year is through the roofs. We got guys who love the game of basketball. You see Pat Higgins. I, I drive by him every single day at 10 o'clock at night out on the outdoor court at Damon just doing work. Um, everybody comes in ready to uh, play and ready to compete, and that's what you want in, in guys. Um, experience comes. You can't teach experience. But the love for the game and, and the intensity for the game, we got our freshmen. If you look at the freshman careers that, that they've had in high school, um, that means they love basketball, and, and they're going to come in and do that same thing for us. We got a lot of guys who compete, and, and even in the business world, competition is what grows everything and what makes everything better, what makes everything stronger. And that's all you want as a, as a player and as a coach. Definitely. Definitely. You mentioned a lot of um, newer guys coming back and you've had a lot of big games over the years. Are, are there any, a uh, couple favorite moments that still stand out to you from being a Wildcat? There's, there's always a few. Um, the one, um, the, everybody's going to go back. Queens last year, I scored 47 points. But the that doesn't matter to me. I know I see the big smile on your face. That, it, was, it was an awesome game. Like the dumb yeah, but the thing that stands out to me in, in, in his, my mind is Breon Harris's 1,000 point that game. Um, at Roberts, Red Band, Jeff Red Band breaking uh, the 300 three-point plateau mark. Um, just different plays that, that see my guys succeed and seeing my guys get better. Um, there's there's always games. We can go back to um, I don't even know freshman year. We got where I we played Malloy in a double overtime game. Garvin coming out here and making plays for us. Jay scoring his thousand point. Um, there's always going to be plays here or there. Quinley uh, uh, dunking on a man, uh, one of the players from Queens last year or two years ago. There's always plays that we can go back to. It's just the the, the camaraderie of this team and this program that really stands out to me. I don't think you can pick one single game. Yeah. And you mentioned Jeff Rudbeard, who is now an assistant coach for Coach Mac. Um, Dwayne Ryan, grandest on the staff as well. Um, I guess what's it been like having your former teammate now as as a coach? Has, it, has the relationship changed? Um, I mean, I think I don't think the relationship has changed. I think as every player has, there's the respect for your coaches. Um, Rudbeard knows that. Me and him joke about it all the time. I, I said, I don't know how I can how I can call you coach when me and you have when you've yelled at me as much on the court and for my playing, I've yelled at you just as much. But that's just that's all fun and games. The the thing is, I've always respected Jeff Redman. I've always respected Coach Grant. I've always respected Coach Mack. Um, at the end of the day, those are the guys that are going to get us to that next level. And you know, I I tell. Yes, we're talking about Redman, but I've even told we were uh, when I was playing some um, some basketball with Andrew Mason. I messed up. And Andrew Mason's our freshman. And he was a little quiet um, about what what I did. And he was kind of trying – he wanted to yell at me a little bit. And he was – I could tell he was nervous a little bit. I'm that big senior, got 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 the name to it. Like, I've scored a lot of points. He doesn't want to yell at me. I, I, I told him straight to his face. I said, dude, if I messed up, I want you to, I want you to tell me right to my face because we're not going to get to that level if you're not holding me accountable. Like, I will hold you accountable. When we step in between these lines, everybody is – is one team we're Damon across the chest. That's why we have no names on our backs. It's everybody for one goal, winning the game for Damon. And if I messed up, I want you to tell me. So it goes back to with with Coach Redband, where if I mess up, I want him to tell me. I don't want him to think that okay, we played together for four years or three years. I, he he's going to be nervous to tell me anything. Now now he's the coach. He's here. Coach Mac hired him for a reason. He has a lot of knowledge about this game. Um, I want him to hold me accountable, just like I always held him, and he always held me accountable on the floor. Um, just because he's wearing the, the, the white or black uh, polo shirts now, uh, that doesn't change anything. He's still, he's still my guy, and he's still, I want him to still hold me accountable so we can win games.
definitely that's that's a solid answer and i mean hopefully um Hopefully you don't accidentally pass it to him when he's sitting on the bench or anything. But I, I don't think you will. I think you, I think you're good. No, I think Red Band, if you ask him, he'll he'll hope he'll say I, I wish I passed to him more. So I think I think I always got my sights on the goal when Red Band's in, and until I get that triple team. So we we'll, we won't worry about that yet. <laughs> definitely, definitely. I heard that you know you've done. Well, I mean, you've done a lot of great stuff on the court, but outside of basketball, you've done a couple of internships. Um, with Day one with Damon, one with UB. Um, so, and I'm I'm I'm, hope, I'm guessing you're going to try to play professionally after Damon. But um, why are your post Damon plans with your sports management degree? Well, I think right now I'm getting my uh, master's in business associate or administration, whatever it is. I always get that confused. My I'm getting my MBA. So um, right now I'm just going to focus on that. And I think I think that's one thing that's COVID is really kind of confused and messed up is is we don't know anything I could be here for another year I could be we could be done this year um I think it's just let's focus on now and I've had a lot of opportunities to play with or to learn from a lot of great people uh just like you have we're, we're kind of in the same boat I want to do the same stuff you do and and we realize that and I've been in I've had a chance to internship with John Fuller and got a lot of great knowledge from him uh, a lot of a lot of different systems knowledge stuff like that so I don't think there's one goal I could tell you right now just because COVID is so up in the air where we don't know what my plans are. Like I could graduate, I could be done with this year playing and I could go play somewhere overseas or I could, if I got the right job opportunity, I, maybe I'll take that where it's something you can't turn down. You never know. Um, COVID throw, threw everything up in the air. So right now it's just play by year and let's just get better tomorrow. Yeah, definitely. Explore your options. I feel like that's been the key thing to with other people here on campus and elsewhere. Um, but yeah, I mean, definitely. I mean, what did you decide to um, pursue this, this SID kind of kind of track, if you will? You said, "Well, I can't hear you." Your SID. What made you decide to get into the sports information side? Well, you know, you can ask my father about this. My dad was the guy when I played baseball. He was doing the scorebooks. He was doing all that. He would do the stats, and I was the guy that would always love to look at that. Uh, you guys do great work for Damon. I, I always watch and listen to the commentating. Um, hey. I always. I always read the recaps, look at the statistics, and it's and people say, "Oh, you're selfish. You know all these statistics of all your teammates." Um, but that's not my goal. My goal is is I look at these things just because they interest me. I like to see where we're at as a team, see where people can get better, and just and see where I'm struggling as myself. Um, so when I took a class here in a news writing class as an elective here, we started learning about recaps and, and my teacher really knew I like sports. So she let me try to write, write like game recaps and like highlight pieces like you guys are doing right now with the weekly series. And it's just something that I fell in love. I said, if we can combine sports statistics and, and media and getting things out to people, that's my way of my end goal of, of hopefully being an athletic director one day. Cause we all know we, you, know, you don't come out of college and be the AD of Kentucky on day one. So this is something that I love, and it's a perfect way. If you look, um, Moran, Coach Moranto has been been posting a lot of things on social media, stuff like that, about some of the best athletic directors in the in the game right now in the country have started off as sports information directors. So that's a perfect avenue for me, and I, I can't wait to to be able to pursue that when when the ball stops bouncing because everybody knows that happens at some point. So uh, I'm just excited for that. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a huge point that you mentioned about. Um, some people think that it's just you get your degree and then boom, that big job's just gonna come. Like you gotta move up the ranks. So that's that's really cool that you get to see that. Um, I guess you know we talked about basketball a lot. Um, I guess what what is you know what does Andrew Cisco like to do for fun? Do, do do you have any hobbies outside of of playing and watching sports? Hey, there's there's a lot of hobbies I love to do. I love. Everybody will give you those generic hanging out with friends, stuff like that, hanging out with family. But, but I, I've been blessed to where my parents grew up. I've had a, a very good opportunity to, or a very, very lucky chance of having some lake houses up, up in uh, northern New York, right on Lake Ontario. So one of the hobbies I just love to do is, is if I'm not playing basketball, stuff like that, it's either hanging out, playing video games, just calming down. Um, I live by myself, so I, I got a lot of time to to chill out on some days after basketball, stuff like that, which is something I love to do. But I also, I love to go to my lake house. My family just got two new jet skis this year. So we've had a lot of time on the water this summer. Um, something we've never had, never had a boat, nothing like that. And it's kind of ironic when you live on Lake Ontario, the biggest, one of the biggest uh, great lakes, you don't have any 
water toys or anything like that. So this year um, we got some of those and it's just been more fun to hang out there. So that's definitely one of the main things I love to do. Um, just hanging out with my family, getting to know um, my family better. Um, We've had some some things, and as a lot of people know, that's that's what my tattoo is about. Is is my family is very close to me. It's my grandmother. Um, she passed away a couple years ago during the season. So, um, just being able to get up there now and, and hang out with my grandfather a lot more, who's always been very supportive, um, has just been very help, uh, helpful and beneficial to me. So it's been very really great. Definitely, and I guess during this time, during this COVID time, you've spent time more with your family. Um, have you watched any anything good on Netflix lately? Oh. I've watched a lot of great shows. A lot of people don't don't not not everybody agrees with all my shows, but I'm more of the kind like uh, the crime kind of guy. So I've I just finished up. Uh, it's called SWAT. The the main characters from Criminal Minds. I've always watched the family. Uh, How I Met Your Mother's the the every show. So there's not much I won't watch. Um, I'm more of a crime guy, but just kind of watching Powers, Prison Breaks, things like that. Yeah, were, were you into Marvel at all? Were you satisfied with not Marvel? Not so much Marvel. My my sister and my father are big Marvel people, but I I just never got into it where I, I can sit down for four hours. I'm too active watching right. the movie stuff like that. So yeah, definitely. I guess just lastly, man. Um, I mean, we, we've talked in the past. We've you know gone back and forth on Twitter too. I mean, you've been a great uh, representative for Damon um, the past few years, and I mean, look, I want to play. I, I want to see you guys play. I want to call your games again. Um, but is there anything you'd like? <laughs> thanks. Uh, is there anything you'd like to say to the viewers, to the fans uh, that, have, that have supported you, followed you over the past five years here? Um, I don't think anything specifically for for anyone who's followed me. Um, I just think um just thank you for everyone who's followed our our program throughout the years i think it's more of a, of a program thing and and one of the things that that kept me here instead of of seeing where i could go because everyone knows that was always what was going on the thing that kept me here was the family atmosphere um the the support we have everybody from not not every player gets a a, a relationship with your school's president um President Olson and me shake hands whenever we see each other, have uh, say a few words back and forth. Um, not everybody does that. So that family atmosphere here and the people who have supported us. When we go to the NCAA tournament, there's always coaches and, and, and faculty members that are, are sending us off and, and out there when we get on the bus. And just stuff like that is real cool. Um, it's something I'll always remember, and I just want to uh, show my appreciation, my gratitude for that because not many schools do that. Um, we're just a small Division II school out here, and, and whether it be the supporters that helped us get to Austin, Texas, or or Missouri, or play the big games against Syracuse, things like that, just just thank you for helping us get there because I wouldn't be able to do that um, anywhere else. Um, just be able to thank people for bringing Coach Mack into the school. Um, what we've built here over the last five years is what really kept me here, and I'm just excited to be able to, to excuse me to finish that for one last year, whether that be this year or in the year to come. Um, so just thank you. That's, that's really all I could say. Yeah. It's been fun. Yeah, definitely. It's been fun for sure. Well, Andrew, thanks for joining us today at Wildcat Weekly. Um, hopefully, when things clear up, um, I, I mean, a one-on-one -on -one game might be a little bit unfair from my angle because I'm a short guy. But maybe we can play a couple rounds of horse when, um, you know, when things open up again, okay? Hey, let's get it. And one-on-one, -on -one, I won't go too hard if we do play that. But <laughs> the gym's yeah. always open. Let me know, Joe. <laughs> Definitely. Thanks, Ben. And uh, thanks for watching Wildcat Weekly, everybody. Um, we'll see you next week. Take care. Thank you.